Hi there. In this business topic video, we're going to take a look at two more financial ratios that are both very closely related. They're called the receivables days and the payables days ratios. Uh, what these two ratios are all about is the amount of money that's owed to a business and also the amount of money a business owes to its creditors. And of course, this is a big issue in business. Small firms in particular often have to wait for their larger customers to settle the bills. That can be a drain on cash flow. And of course, a lot of businesses try as often as they can to delay paying the people who've supplied them with goods and services. So these ratios we're going to look at here are all about the amounts owed to a business and also how much a business owes its suppliers and how long it takes to pay them. Two key terms to uh, quickly cover before we look at how the calculation is done. Firstly, on the left-hand side there, trade receivables, sometimes otherwise known as trade debtors. What these are, are the amounts that are owed to a business by customers. So a customer buys goods and services. Uh, they may be allowed to have a period of credit, say 30, 60 days before they're asked to settle the invoice. So a trade receivable is an amount that's owed to a business uh, by its customers, and that will be shown as a current asset in the balance sheet. On the other side there, trade payables are the amounts that are owed by a business to other businesses and individuals, typically suppliers who've allowed the business to buy goods and services on credit. So trade payables, the amounts owed by a business, and they are typically shown as current liabilities in the balance sheet. What the two ratios show is how long it takes, on the one hand for the receivables days, how long it takes, the average length of time taken by customers to pay the amounts that they owe our business. On the payable side, how long on average do we take to pay the amounts that we owe? For example, how long do we take before we settle with our suppliers? Let's have a quick look at how these things are calculated. It's, it's a relatively simple calculation. The important thing is to remember that the output from this is in days. It's not a percentage, it's a days number. Receivable days, you simply divide the value of trade receivables at a particular point in time and you get that information from the current assets in the balance sheet and divide that by the, the annual sales of the business. And to get a feel for what fraction of a year that is, you multiply by 365, which should give you a proportion of days that it takes to pay. Here's a little example for you. Let's say that uh, trade receivables are £25,000. That's outstanding from our customers. And over the course of the year, we sold those customers £150,000 worth of sales. So on average, if we divide £25,000 by £150,000 and multiply it by 365, on average, it takes our debtors 60.8 days, or just over two months on average, to pay their bills. So that, in that situation, trade receivables days, or debtor days, is 60.8. And, of course, the key with receivables days is to try to interpret the number. So we know that this is a days figure. It's showing the amount of time it takes customers to pay on average. And that will vary from market to market, from industry to industry. In some industries, it might be, uh, for example, normal uh, to take between two to three months to pay bills. In others, it might be expected that you pay your bills or your customers pay their bills within seven to 14 days. So as you look at the number, you need to think about the industry, but also look out for significant changes. For example, a significant increase in receivables days might suggest that the business has got some issues when it comes to collecting debts from its customers. And of course, also look out for the fact that the information for the trade receivables is drawn from the balance sheet. And therefore, it's possible just to manipulate that number slightly at the balance sheet date in order to reduce the amount of receivables that are shown as outstanding. The creditors days or payables days is a very sim simple and uh, similar calculation, very similar to the receivables days. You simply take the trade payables, that's the amount that's owed to creditors. And you get that from the current liabilities number and divide it by cost of sales, how much we've spent with those trade customers. Or suppliers. So for, here's a little example there on the screen. Uh, let's say that uh, at the balance sheet date we owed our suppliers £75,000. We had spent £500,000 during the year with those suppliers. 
Therefore, if you divide one by the other and multiply by 365, that tells you that on average, it takes us 54.7 days to pay our trade creditors or our payables. Similarly, it's important to be able to interpret the data. So uh, remember with payables days, we're talking about how long the business takes to pay its suppliers. So until it pays suppliers, it has cash in the bank. So generally, a higher figure for payables days is going to be good news for cash flow because the suppliers are effectively financing the business. And ideally, your payables days would at least be higher than your receivables days so that you get the cash in from your customers before you have to pay your suppliers. But of course, you need to be careful because stretching that payables days too far, taking too long to pay your hopefully loyal and reliable suppliers, that may suggest that there are some liquidity or cash flow issues. And of course, the longer you take uh, to pay suppliers, the more likely it is that they will become uh, slightly unhappy with you and therefore you're stretching their goodwill. They may decide not even to supply you because of your failure to pay bills on time. The key thing also to look out for on the payables days is to also compare the information that you can receive uh, by, by calculating liquidity ratios, in particular the current ratio. If the current ratio is weak and perhaps worsening at the same time as the payables days ratio increasing, that would be a pretty good indicator that the business is suffering from liquidity problems. There we go then, that's just a brief introduction to and an explanation of how to calculate these two useful and very commonly used ratios called receivables days and payables days.